Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought, of course, that I would talk about this fight that I thought would be very particularly interesting, or actually this whole entire fight card. <laughs> now, of course, overall, for those of you that have not heard the news as of recent, and this actually kind of comes at a very interesting time because uh, this video overall talking about the whole entire card, I recently did do a live today where I talked a little bit about Terrence Bud Crawford and especially the Canelo Alvarez versus Terrence Bud Crawford situation. But of course, Terrence Bud Crawford, you know, he has elected, at least at the moment, not to fight that of Jerome Boutsenis, which I personally don't really have a problem with. Of course, I do believe that Jerome Boutsenis, that he probably would be the biggest threat either at 147 or 154. But I do believe that Crawford just looks at other things that are a little bit more important, like possibly unifying the 154 pound weight class and possibly getting the Canelo fight. I do believe that Crawford does want the Canelo fight, but in order for that fight to happen, I do believe overall that Canelo is going to have to have a little bit more in it for him. And I think that if Terrence Bud Crawford, I think that if he is potentially able to unify that of the 154 pound weight class, or if he's even able to beat, you know, possibly some middleweight fighters, some middleweight champions, I think Canelo will take a look at that fight and look at it as very plausible because then I think he'll take a look at it and say, okay, that fight, you know, it has, you know, a decent amount more meaning now or it has a little bit, you know, more weight to it. I don't think Canelo <laughs> takes a look at that fight at least as worth it for right now, at least when you compare the risk and the reward factor. And I talked about this, uh, I believe, in a video that I did earlier today or at least one of my lives when I was having a conversation, uh, I believe, uh, uh, you know, with some people today. Uh, but uh, that fight, of course, would be very intriguing. But, <laughs> but of course, the next fight that Terrence Bud Crawford is going to have I believe is going to be over the Uzbekistan fighter. I believe his name is uh, Madrimov, uh, you know, who I believe was a talented Olympian fighter. I don't really know how great or how good Madrimov is. He appears to have a decent amount of power, but <laughs> I believe that he's only had 11 fights throughout his career. I think that he's 10-0 with about 7 or 8 knockouts, and I believe that he also has one draw. So I'm not really quite 100% sure if I would claim Madrimov to be an A-grade opponent because... I really don't know how good he is. But the question is that I also had about this is that how good was this really going to do as an event? Because, of course, this was more than likely going to be on pay-per-view. And I said that more than likely if this fight was going to do good, that it had to have had a great undercard. Because the PBC, and I do believe that this is going to be on the PBC, even though, of course, the first showing on that of Amazon Prime or Amazon, I don't think that it was a bad showing, but <laughs> the zone right now, and isn't it so interesting that a lot of these LDBC and the media guys that they like to praise the PBC and they always love to call the zone rematch room and they love to make fun of the zone and all the other channels. Uh, but once again, when Showtime uh, kicked PBC to the curb, then they expected sympathy. Why are they not talking about the fact that the <laughs> zone basically has been killing the game this year, really leading in points? Because when you talk about it, they pretty much have had all the big fights. They have Jesse Bam Bam Rodriguez versus that of Juan Francisco Estrada. They just had Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. They have Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. They have Dimitri Bavol versus Arthur Bedebeev. And they have a multitude of other fights on there. Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou. You know, at least big to a certain degree. You know, they have Wilder versus Zhang on the undercard, I believe. And, of course, they're also sharing with the PBC Canelo versus Munguia. So, it's just interesting, once again, who they like to promote depending on who they like. But anyways, when it comes down to it, this is going to be a spectacular event. Not just overall because we get to see Terrence Crawford at the 154-pound weight class for the first time and really see how good he's going to be there, which I do expect him to be good there. We're also going to see a multitude of other great fights. We're going to see Isaac Pipple Cruz against Jose Valenzuela, of course, a fighter in David Benavidez's camp. We're going to see, I believe, Abner Mares versus the Leo Santa Cruz 3 which, to be honest with you, is a fight that no one asked for, in my view, but <laughs> at least at least it's kind of two fighters that we know. Andrew Ruiz Jr. versus that of Jarrell Big Baby Miller, and apparently, apparently Tim Zhu versus Virgil Ortiz, which might very well be the best fight on that card. That might be actually the best fight in terms of competitiveness on the card, because I'm not 100% sure who's going to win that fight. So this card, if it does remain the way that it is, it's going to be spectacular, and it's going to be debatably the best card of the year. And I thought that the Better Beef versus Bavol card was going to be the best card of the year. But this one may have just replaced it. 
which says a lot. There's a lot of big fights that are happening now in the second half of this year. Starting from May, going all the way to August, there's going to be some massive, massive cards. So it's going to be very interesting. But anyways, let's get into it. Let's see what Dante has to say. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Well, it looks like we're going to see the best card. And when I say best card, I'm talking about the entire card. From the first fight to the main event. And that is Crawford versus Madrimov. They're going to be fighting for the WBA title at 154 in the undercard. Now, once again, and, you know, uh, I don't blame Terrence Bud Crawford for not taking the Jerome Boots in his fight. Uh, as, as one of the commentators, I believe, overall, that joined my live stream earlier, I believe that his name was uh, <laughs> uh, overall the name overall of, uh, God, what was it? I believe Crawford gonna knock out Canelo. Uh, you know, now, of course, he appears to be a Crawford fan, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, he did bring up a point overall that Jerome Boutsenis, that's, uh, I believe that he did turn down the fight potentially once or twice, or at least once within the past. But Jerome Boutsenis right now does appear ready to take on that fight. And like I said, I don't have a problem with Terrence Bud Crawford not taking on that fight right now, especially because he basically did everything at the welterweight class. And overall, he was able to take all the titles. But it's just very interesting, once again, how Canelo Alvarez, for example, from Dante and some of these other channels, that Canelo got criticism for fighting Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders, you know, these weak European white boys. But then Terrence Bud Crawford is fighting basically a European white boy in Madrimov. And I wonder what their narrative is going to be. Because every single time that Terrence Bud Crawford, at least with Dante and Aki TV, no matter what opponent he faces, they try to make him out to be some sort of killer. And that's not me stating, once again, that Crawford has not fought some very good fighters. But, like I said, just in my personal view, Crawford really only has about clear 4 A A-grade wins. And I'm not really sure where I would rank this. I think that it would be a very good win, but I'm not really quite sure how good Madrimov is. So we'll see. It's going to be absolutely stacked. Just added to the undercard is Tim Zhu versus Virgil Ortiz. Assuming Vir That's going to be a great fight right there. If I had to bet on anyone potentially winning that fight, I would maybe say Virgil Ortiz, but we'll see about that. You know, Tim Zhu, you know, he ended up getting a lot of hype in that division, and he's a very good fighter, but I never really seen him as someone that was an A-plus level fighter. Now, of course, in his last fight, in my view, he did <laughs> he did somewhat lose because of the cut, but in my view, he also kind of lost because he made some flaws within the fight. He didn't go to the body enough, and like I said, Tim Zhu... You know, he kind of has that, you know, straight up style, a little bit leaning back style, you know, to the point to where sometimes it can make him a bit hard or it can make it a bit hard to counter and get on the inside when he needs to get there. So Tim Zhu, uh, you know, that this is definitely going to be a make or break fight for him. This is <laughs> this is really an interesting fight for Tim Zhu to take on. And I have to give him a lot of credit because he, he did not have to take on this fight against Virgil Ortiz. But right now for Virgil Ortiz, this is the perfect opportunity. Ortiz gets past his next fight against Thomas DeLarme, which is a massive underdog. He should get past that fight with flying colors. Once he does, he will be fighting on this Crawford undercard against Tim Zhu. Then you have Pitbull Cruz against Arroyo Valenzuela. You have Andy Ruiz versus Big Baby Miller. And I guess to open up the card is going to be Leo Santa Cruz versus Mares. This is an amazing card. The Mares versus Santa Cruz fight definitely threw me for a loop. I mean, Mares hasn't fought in years. I mean, I think he's been retired for about a few years, ever since he ended up, you know, uh, getting getting somewhat almost of a cataract, uh, you know, or there was something up with his eye, I believe, right before the Javante Tank Davis fight. It's a good thing he didn't fight Javante Tank Davis either, because Javante would have <laughs> Javante would have popped both of his eyes out with one good left, you know. But uh, you know, just in my view, anyway. But anyways, when it comes down to it, uh, you know. Um, it, you know, it, I, I'm a little bit surprised that that fight ended up happening. I also haven't seen Santa Cruz fight in a very long time, but it's, it's particularly interesting. It's at least a filler. Uh, I think that Al Heyman does realize that he's going to have to try to make a card as big as possible because right now, uh, at least at the moment, it does appear that the zone that right now that they're kind of taking over. So we'll see what happens with that. But Andy Ruiz versus Jarrell Big Baby Miller. I mean, that's that's kind of interesting, but Jarrell Big Baby Miller at this point in my view, I mean, he pretty much got his ass kicked by Danny Dubois. I don't really take Jarrell Big Baby Miller seriously at this point. I mean, we all thought that Andrew Ruiz had a weight problem. If you if you take a look at Jarrell Big Baby Miller, 
in that last fight. The man was like 310 pounds. The man overall, <laughs> the man is just one pure overall lard. It just is what it is. I just, and on top of that, he's like 40 some years old, I believe at this point. He's just, he's not quite the same fighter. But, you know, you never know because Ruiz sometimes could use his feet a bit better. So we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, we'll see overall what ends up happening with that. But this is definitely a great card. And then, of course, we get to see Crawford to see how he's going to be able to do against that Imagimov at his debut at 154 pounds. Now, the question really is going to be about Crawford, in my view, is that who potentially is going to be able to possibly handle him at 154? Because I just don't know if there's really anybody there that is really going to be able to be a huge threat to him. I mean, maybe Tim Zhu, you know, maybe Fundura, maybe, uh, you know, uh, what's his name, Virgil Ortiz, maybe Jamel Charlo, but to be honest with you, I think that Crawford is way skilled in any of those fighters. I mean, Virgil Ortiz might be potentially the biggest threat because he's somewhat decently skilled and he has excellent A grade level power. But I, I think that Crawford more than likely would be too maneuverable and too good for him. But we'll see. It has been presented by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. To be honest, I don't think that Terrence but Crawford, I don't think that, you know, he would really be truly challenged, at least in that particular weight class. I don't think that he's really going to be challenged unless he were to fight someone over like a Yana Beck or like that of a Canelo Alvarez. I just don't think that he's going to be particularly challenged because I don't see any of the other fighters there. I just don't think that they have the boxing ability to deal with him. I just don't think that they do. And I've been stating that about the 154 pound weight class for a very long time. Uh, these guys for the longest time talking about the LDBC and new media, they keep, they kept trying to say that, you know, 154 was the deepest division in boxing. It, it was somewhat of a deep division, but it was filled with nothing but B and C grade level fighters. It's like a basketball team to where like, you know, you recognize a lot of names, but they have no superstar, you know, like, <laughs> like it's almost like the current day Chicago Bulls. Like, yeah, you know who, you know, Lonzo Ball is, you know who DeMar DeRozan is. You know, you know overall who Zach Levine is, but none of those guys are superstars. Like, <laughs> so 154, in my view, pretty much ever since Canelo left that weight class and the Charlo brothers started moving up from that weight class and Andrade, th th that, that weight class really has not been superstar studded ever since then. But of course, Crawford and Spence just moved up, so that may have just changed a little bit. Arabia, this is what they always wanted to do, was put together the biggest fights, the biggest cards make the fights that the fans really want to see and things are starting to come to fruition the saudi prince he said his goal was to make an undisputed champion at 154 and now that crawford in my view that's the best move for terrence bud crawford in my view that's the best move for him if you want that canelo alvarez fight in my view that can kind of wait uh if canelo was even still the champion overall at 168 by that time uh you know and then we'll particularly see I would love to see Terrence Bud Crawford try to go for Undisputed at 154. So, of course, according to the circumstances, because Fondora's team apparently is going to try to get that Errol Spence Jr. fight next, um, you know, I think that Crawford pretty much did the best that he could under the circumstances. Now, of course, he could have fought Jerome Boutinus. A lot of people are getting on his ass. And like I said, you know, if you're going to get after certain other fighters who are not fighting guys, like what Dante does after Canelo, then in my view, <laughs> you should also be getting after Crawford for stating that it's a lose-lose situation because if Crawford were not a black fighter, we all know what Dante and Aki TV would be saying about him. But, you know, it is what it is. But once again, I don't mind it not happening because he proved everything in the welterweight division. He unified it already, and he beat the guy that for several years many people stated that he needed to fight. So in my view, it's kind of mission accomplished, you know. But I would love to see Crawford try to go for undisputed in the third weight class. If he could become undisputed in a third weight class, you know, I don't know still if his resume would be as deep as some of the other all-time great fighters that I've seen, but he definitely, you know, would then have a debate, in my view, right there with any of the greatest of all time, or at least certainly in my top 10, you know, of all time conversation, because he would have been the only fighter to become undisputed in three separate weight classes. Chris fighting against Madrimov for the WBA belt, the WBO has already ordered Sebastian Fendura to either fight the winner or give the belt up. Then you have another good card they put together, which was Bivol versus Better BF. And Deontay Wilder, he's fighting on that undercard. There's some really good fights on that undercard as well, including Ammo Wood. Agreed, those are the two best cards of the year. I believe that uh, Philip Perkovich versus Danny Dubois is on that undercard. Zhang versus Wilder, and I think maybe even a couple of other fights that I can't remember. Yeah, those two cards are going to be not, <laughs> you, like, you literally can't miss those cards. Williams, he's 
fighting on that card. So we have some really big cards to look forward to when it comes to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The only bad news is we're going to have to wait till summer. Let me tell you another good card, actually, that the zone is coming up with. Uh, Subrio Matias versus that one, uh, I believe, Australian fighter Poro, the dude who just knocked out Montana Love. That's going to be another little interesting fight. And let me tell you what, that Australian dude, he's not the worst boxer in the world. And he knocked out Montana Love within six rounds. Don't be surprised if Subrio Matias don't get past that dude. To see these big cards. Now, the Saudis, they also said their goal is to make the winner of Bivol versus Better Biev against David Benavidez. And they also want to make Canelo versus Crawford, which means they're most likely planning on making Canelo an offer that he cannot refuse, or it will be almost impossible to justify refusing. But that's future plans because Crawford, he still has some tough fights before he even makes it to the Canelo fight if Canelo accepts. Let's see how it all plays out. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this. And, of course, Dante is going to play his regular game, which is basically edging certain fighters overall or trying to criticize them into taking certain fights, uh, at least the fighters that he doesn't like, and then just not giving them credit anyway. Like, you know what? Dante talked all this shit overall for the longest time about how he was afraid of both of the Charlo brothers, and even if Jamel moved up from 154, you know, Canelo would lose to him, and then all of a sudden, you know, he beat him, and, you know, then all of a sudden he was too small, you know, all this sort of stuff, so Don, Dante is not going to give Canelo Alvarez credit either way, but that, that was that was a question once again within my live stream as of earlier, uh, depending overall on, on the question that I was having a conversation with that particular gentleman about how much credit uh, would Canelo Alvarez particularly get if he beat Terrence Bud Crawford. Well, I think it depends on the circumstances. I think that if the fight were to happen right now, I don't think Canelo really would get that much credit for the fight if he was able to beat that of Terrence Bud Crawford. But, of course, if Crawford was able to, you know, dominate the 154-pound weight class, basically knock everybody out, you know, then maybe have one fight at 160, then I think Canelo, of course, would look at that fight and he'd be willing overall to look at that in a little bit more of a positive light. You know, so, you know, I think that once again, if Crawford is able to unify the 154 pound weight class, then I think Canelo will really take a look at that fight as serious, you know, and there has been rumors behind the scenes that Canelo could potentially be interested in that fight. Now, personally, I wouldn't want to see the fight right now, but we'll see what happens. That'd be a very interesting fight, but I think for it, for Canelo to really be interested in that fight, he has to take a look at it and say, okay, if I fight Terrence Bud Crawford, it has to be to the point to where if I beat him, that I look like the number one pound for pound fighter of my day, and there's no debate about it. Because I'm not going to get in the ring with a dangerous fighter like a Terrence Bud Crawford, who's three pounds, you know, over or three weight classes lighter than me at the current moment in time. And then I beat the hell out of him, you know, and then everyone just says, well, you were supposed to win that fight because you were way bigger than him. And then if I lose to him, my career is looked at in a completely different light. So I don't blame Canelo Alvarez for that. But like I said, I would love to see that fight eventually. Of course, if it can get made. But Canelo Alvarez, I believe that he thinks that Crawford's more than likely going to have to do some work at the 154, maybe even 160-pound weight class. Another fight that I would actually love to see if Crawford can get past everyone at 154, which I believe more than likely that he will, is that of Yana Beck. Yana Beck is no joke. That dude, that dude actually could be a very huge challenge to both Crawford and that of Canelo. To be honest with you, I'm not really quite sure if Crawford would be Yanabek just because of the size and the power and the speed alone. But that'd be an interesting fight. Uh, you know, but Canelo, you know, we'll see what ends up going on with him. I'm not really sure what he plans to do uh, overall later, later on this year. Could be Charlo, uh, could be Crawford, could be Spence. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, that's pretty much about it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Talk to you all later.